what I mean You too, team, keep it clean You see my boy, he like gotta made it Gotta made it Boy, that's my homie, ain't that right and graven Right and graven Now Odell Beckham Jr. is officially a Baltimore Raven. He signed his contract, had his introductory press conference, and it went well. It went smooth. Um, there was, of course, a healthy dose of Lamar Jackson questions, but I mean, Odell Beckham Jr. is a wide receiver, and people want to know who's going to be throwing him the ball. Um, but one thing that I noticed that Odell Beckham Jr. did throughout the entirety of the press conference whenever it was brought up, he let it be known that he cannot assure that Lamar Jackson is going to be the quarterback for the Baltimore Ravens. He, he, he cannot say that's set in stone because it's not set in stone. But he made sure he treaded lightly with that one. And he continued to do a lot of deflecting to EDC and Harbaugh. He said, hey, I, and he waved to Lamar. Hey, Lamar, if you're watching this. But he, he let it be known. It's up to those guys. It's not up to me. He even said, hey, if, if I could hand it all to you, I would. But... It's not in my payroll. It's up to them. And that was, that's the only thing he really could do about that whole situation. Because so much of that is really based on hope. A lot of us, including myself, are assuming that Lamar Jackson is going to be the quarterback of the Baltimore Ravens. I know there's still some people that think he won't be. Uh, and of course, time will tell. But Odell Beckham Jr., when asked about it, again, he pretty much steered clear of giving any concrete answer to that. He said he hopes that he is. And, of course, we all hope that he is. And I think with Odell Beckham Jr. coming to the Baltimore Ravens, obviously they cut him a fat check. But with Odell Beckham Jr. coming to the Baltimore Ravens, I think he is banking on Lamar Jackson being the quarterback of the team. But we won't know till we know. But team, keep it clean. Before we get into the details of this uh, presser, Odell Beckham Jr.'s introductory presser, which it went pretty well, um, I got to give a special shout-out to the newest Team Keep It Clean patrons. Uh, my guy, John R., uh, my guy Mike F, uh, LeVar W, and TL Mac. I appreciate y'all being Team Keep It Clean patrons. Uh, if any of y'all like to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash ingravenviz. And shout out to all the Team Keep It Clean channel members too. I appreciate y'all like crazy, man. I appreciate everybody that supports. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Turn your notifications on because when we talk about presses like this, I don't want y'all to be missing stuff. But anyway, let's get into it. Odell Beckham Jr. is, of course, a very extremely popular NFL wide receiver. Um, and with Ravens press conferences, they have press conferences all the time, as we know. But for this press conference, a player that has not played in over a year. NFL Network was live streaming this press conference. NFL Network don't just live stream any press conference. That lets you know the star power that Odell Beckham Jr. has. And what he's bringing to the Baltimore Ravens. And that's even before he steps on the field. Like, he, he, he ain't even stepped foot in M&T Bank yet. He ain't even stepped foot. Well, he is in Owings Mills because that's where the whole the, the presses are. But he ain't stepped foot on a practice field. Or nothing. But just on his presser alone, introductory presser alone, he's bringing all this attention. So, Ravens fans, get ready for it. Because, I mean, it was already a lot of attention on the Ravens already with Lamar Jackson. But you add, a, you add a Odell Beckham Jr. to that, and hopefully you re-add a Lamar Jackson to that. Oof. Go make your money, Ravens. I know the business. But anyway, um, before the, the presser even started, ooh, I felt bad because they were taking pictures. And, and I didn't feel bad because they were taking pictures. I felt bad because they showed Odell Beckham Jr. in his jersey, and I said, ooh, I felt bad for Brochet. Because there's been a lot of speculation on what jersey number Odell Beckham Jr. is going to wear. Is it going to be zero like it's been listed on the website and NFL.com and NFLshop.com? Is it going to be double zero? But no, Odell Beckham Jr. had a number three. And I've been someone that has, even before, way before they even signed Odell Beckham Jr., I've been someone who's assumed that James Prochet won't make the roster this year. Um, only because, not because he's a bad player at all, but just because I feel like the Ravens, they, they fell out of favor with him. And it showed um, throughout last season. But when he had that number three, I said, oh, poor Prochet. Poor Prochet. But we'll see what happens. Because, I mean, anything possible until it ain't possible anymore. But getting into it, um, Eric DaCosta, he talked about how this has been something that's been happening over the past year. And yeah, we know. We've been covering this thing from jump. Uh, again, it, it started during last season. 
started in the middle of last season, last football season, uh, they, they were saying that the Ravens have been talking to Odell Beckham Jr. They were keeping in contact with him and stuff. But, yeah, so this has been going on for a while. He said that they attended Odell's workout in Arizona. And he said, we went into it knowing that we were the underdogs. And that is a uh, big thing with the Baltimore Ravens, them just being known as underdogs. Um, but anyway, uh, Justina Anderson, she asked about the expectations on if Lamar was a factor in this whole thing coming together. Um, and Odell said, hey, he said, that's more of a question for them. And he pointed at EDC and Hobbs. And he said, that's what he's hoping for, though. I uh, said he's excited to get on the field, especially after missing so much time. Uh, and he was asked, before you signed, did you get any assurances from Lamar that you guys would be playing together this year? And again, he said, I didn't get any assurances. I didn't get any assurances. Uh, he said, my thoughts are that he would be here. Uh, these two want him to be here. So I said, all right, Odell Beckham Jr., you're you, you, you a little agent for Lamar, huh? I see you. Oh, you, look, you, you working as a little agent, like a, like a little liaison between Lamar and EDC and all and them. Like, hey, these two, they, they want you here. And, of course, they've continued to publicly say that they want Lamar. Uh, but maybe Odell Beckham Jr., he felt like he could sort of be the cherry on top. Like, hey, I'm here now. Hey, all right, Lamar, let, let's make it happen, baby. So, anyway, um, he said, uh, he was asked that, you're, you're used to the big city. Uh, but why did you choose the Ravens? Like, because obviously he played uh, with the New York Giants, and that's what all the lights and attention is going to be on you. He played in L.A. with the Rams, got the Super Bowl there, and there's plenty of star power there and whatnot. But his response, he said, well, I was in Cleveland. I said, ooh, oh, yeah, you, oh, you a Raven for sure. Now you're over there taking your shots at your own city. Okay. Uh, and he said the big cities are great for opportunities off the field. Okay, He's talking about the sponsorship and the brand deals and all that, uh, <coughs> but I didn't really care what. <coughs> excuse me, what was going on unless I'm catching footballs. Uh, then he was asked about Todd Munkin, and he said they had a great reporter uh, in Cleveland. He said sometimes situations just aren't for you though, uh, and no one did anything wrong, but sometimes it's not a good situation for you. And, and both of them went their separate ways. Uh, he went on to the Rams, won a Super Bowl. Munkin went on to Georgia, won two national championships. So I say it worked out for the both of them with them leaving Cleveland. Uh, then another question was asked to EDC. He said, have you talked to Lamar since, uh, since Odell Beckham Jr. signed the deal? Uh, he said, no, I haven't talked to Lamar since the signing. Our feelings on Lamar haven't changed since the end of the season. He's the right person to lead us where we want to be. Okay, we just, Something got to give, though, with them making this thing happen. Because, again, it's, we all, a lot of us assume that it's going to be Lamar, but they get nothing set in stone. And that can be scary to think about when you really think about it. Like, everything looks great right now. Oh, yeah, they got Odell Beckham Jr., the draft coming up, da da da, da. But nothing set in stone. But hopefully it could be set in stone and set on the contracts, and, but we'll see. Um, Hold up, Beckham Jr., he was talking about the Ravens. He said, I, I was in the AFC North. I got whooped by the Ravens plenty of times. Uh, and he said he's been an underdog his entire life, and the Ravens, they fit that bill and that mold. He said, that excites me. Uh, it boiled down to being in a place in his life where it means more to be wanted than, oh, we would love to have you. And I was like, oh, okay. I said, all right, Odell. Odell getting a little deep with that one. But I, I, I like that one because if somebody wants you there, that's different than, oh, yeah, 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 we'd love to have you. It's, it's cool if you come through. It's cool if you show up. If you show up, hey, great, the more the merrier. But if they actually want you there, that's different. And I was like, okay, well, there I see you. But he said it wasn't about the money. <laughs> he, said, he said that they showed that they wanted me to be here, and they saw me as a piece. I got one ring, and he said it was bittersweet, though. Because, of course, him getting the ring and making all them plays, but then not being able to finish the game with the injury. Uh, and he said it's all about getting more rings and championships. Uh, and he was asked, what did the team do to show you that love uh, and that they wanted you here? And <clears throat> he said that Steve Bishotti reached out. And I'm like, man, Steve Bishotti. Like, <laughs> he probably hit up Odell and was like, look, Odell, please, man, help us out. I, I cut you a check. I cut the check like I never cut a check for no wide receiver ever. I cut, you, I cut the check. But... Please, we, we need you. We're trying to keep Lamar. We're trying to keep him at this price, but he went this way. You know how these negotiations go, but please. So uh, whatever he said, it worked. But he said Steve reached out, and he said, uh, I texted my agent and said, I think I want to be a Raven. Said they just showed him that they wanted him here. 
Uh, and he said it's, he's all about love. He said, show love, you get love. And he said them ravens showed him. Um, now, somebody asked him, where are you as far as recovery? Uh, and he said, it's not really a second ACL surgery because he said that season, his last season with the Rams, that he played without an ACL. He said he found out about it in week nine and they approached him saying that, saying that they could redo uh, his ACL. Uh, but he said no. He said that he would die on a sword. Meaning that, hey, whatever happens, happens, but he want to go out there and fight. He want to go out there and play with his boys and whatnot, play with his team. And he did that. He did that. So that touchdown that he scored on the Ravens, and what was that, week 14 or 15, something like that? That touchdown that he scored on the Ravens, and he hit the bird flu? Yeah, yeah, that was with no ACL. Yeah. That, anyway. Um... And he also talked about how he just he cared that much about playing. He said he had to sit back and watch everybody have fun last year. Uh, and he was looking at the chops, wanting to be back out there. And he said he could have played a bunch of other sports in life, but he sacrificed a lot to play football. And now he's just really focused on this upcoming season. Um, then uh, I think uh, EDC was asked about what gave you the confidence, uh, like with the type of contract that they signed Odell Beckham Jr. to. Because a lot of people felt like it was a risky contract and whatnot. But EDC said this was a guy that we felt could help us take, that could, that could help take us to the next level. Now, I think in parentheses, he's probably thinking this, this is a guy that could help us get Lamar under contract as sort of an incentive. But anyway, uh, he said the last game that he played in, he was probably the best player on the field. Uh, we remember the game in New York when he was with the Giants. And he turned to Odell and he was like, what, uh, what did you have, like 200 yards? And he talked about how that was a tough game for him and John Harbaugh. Um, and now, remember, when Jimmy Smith was playing, Odell ain't have nothing. He ain't have nothing. But when Jimmy Smith went down, that's when Odell went off. Uh, but anyway, he's, uh, EDC said Odell is 100% invested, and that's something that we always look for. I said after two minutes of sitting uh, in Arizona across the table from Odell, I felt like he was the right guy for the team. Um, Odell said that he isn't worried about coming back from his injury. He's already passed the mental part. Uh, of coming back from ACL injury. And that's, that's probably the biggest part right there. Because when these players come back from ACL injuries, Achilles injuries, all types of injuries, uh, the mental part is probably harder than the physical. Because with the mental part, the physical could be right. You could be straight. But it's getting back out there and really trusting that you're all the way good. Like really, and, and really giving your all on each and every play, each and every snap and practice and all that. Really trusting your body mentally, being like, oh, okay, I can do this. And not second guessing yourself. Because if you start second guessing yourself, especially on a football field, oh, that, that's dangerous. That's, second guessing yourself is like an injury waiting to happen. So he said he's passed the mental part. So that's important. Um, he said that uh, there are a lot of younger receivers in the room and that he can teach plenty of things uh, that he learned. And he said he can still always learn, too. And he said, if you're not in, you're not in a place where you can learn and pass on the knowledge, then you're probably in the wrong place. I said, oh, I said, oh, Dale. <laughs> OK, man. Oh, Dale, the philosopher. I liked it. But anyway, continuing. He said uh, it was tough when he first had the surgery, but that's all behind him now. He said he's looking forward to everything and that he's really excited. He said he's determined and hungry and he's ready to be excellent Again, so that boy letting it be known like hey, I was excellent before, and I know that I was excellent before, but I'm ready to be excellent again. So the confidence is oozing through. Um, I wish you know what I, I didn't hear it. Maybe I missed it, but I didn't. I didn't hear anybody ask him about Bateman. I didn't hear anybody say, "Oh, what do you think about Rashad Bateman?" I didn't hear anybody ask him about that. But maybe I missed it. I don't know. Anyway, uh, somebody asked when you battled Marlon Humphrey. Um, like, what, what's the practice going to be like? What's it going to be like y'all being teammates? But he said he'll have to give Marlon uh, a few headbutts, but as he said it'll be nice to go against him. Uh, him, especially with him being an all-pro corner. And he's happy that they're teammates now. And he said that he ain't, he ain't got beef with anybody um, and doesn't have any bad blood. He said life's too short for that. And I, I know that there's been a lot of Ravens fans that have felt like, oh, man, uh, Odell Beckham Jr., he would never come to the Ravens. He don't like MP Juice, man. He don't like Marlon Humphrey. They don't like him. And, da, 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 da. and I'm, I'm thinking, like, no, man, like, no. Them dudes ain't got no beef. That, those games, especially that game where Marlon had him on the ground, that, they just competing, man. They competing. Them, them tempers are flying. The emotions are involved. They are just competing. That's it. They on the same team, they will be cool. If they not on the same team, I'm sure they will still be cool. Even though MP Juice, man, has some not so team keep it clean stuff to say after that game. But I'm sure they would all be fine, especially with that check looking right, too. Um, 
he uh somebody asked him how close he is to where he was pre injury, and he said after being a year removed, going on. Uh, like 13 to 14 months post-surgery, that's when you really start to turn that corner. But he said we'll see in September how close he is to where he was before the injury. Uh, now, this question was directed at Harves. Um, they asked, was there anything in particular you were looking to learn about Odell Beckham Jr. when you met him? And he said, um, we were, and this was back during the season, he said we were, we were fighting to make it through the season, uh, but Odell was fighting to get back to playing. Uh, but he said that Odell was an open book uh, on where he was headed, uh, like the direction that he was headed in, and he was struck by Odell Beckham Jr.'s straightforwardness and honesty. Uh, but then to Odell Beckham Jr., somebody asked him, is there any concern about the uncertainty at the quarterback position? Uh, and he waved at Lamar. He said, Lamar, I don't know if you're watching, but hey. And he just said that he hopes everything gets worked out, but he said that life's not certain. So again, whenever he was asked a question like that, he, he did a good job of dodging and, and not making anything concrete or official or anything like that. So... Cause I, I, I'm sure he, uh, he knows the business. He knows the business. Not that he can have really any big impact on the negotiations, but you want to, hey, whatever Lamar got to say about his negotiations, you let him say that. Whatever EDC and them got to say about it, you let them say that. You just say, hey, I hope it gets worked out. Cause you don't want to try to lean toward one side or the other or whatnot. Uh, you don't want to get in the middle of it. Basically, you don't want to get in the middle of somebody's money. So, anyway, um. Somebody asked him, when is he going to be getting on the field? Uh, he said, that'll be a discussion with the trainers. And now he did say, I appreciated this part a lot, because it's true, because it, it happens a lot. Um, whether it's media people, whether it's YouTube and stuff like that, whether it's something we talking about. Uh, he talked about how there, uh, he said he's been there where the media makes a bigger deal of someone making or missing OTAs than the actual team does. And that happens. And, and, and I think it's from when we're on the outside looking in, Especially around OTA time, because this is like, we're like looking for something. Like, what's going on with the team? We want any updates, any, what's the status of this person, that person, that person? So if somebody missing from OTAs, we can be like, ooh, oh, oh, okay, okay. Um, and it could make you wonder, like, are they happy? Are they unhappy? Da, da, da. We can all be coming to our own conclusions on stuff. Um, but this Odell saying, hey, sometimes the media and stuff, they make it bigger than what it is. And we don't, we don't even be tripping off of all that. So I was like, okay, I, I, I get it, because that, that can happen. Uh, next question was to Harbs. He said, what's the art of bringing in a major personality star and making sure he's a part of the team? I wasn't really a big fan of that question because it made it sound like Odell Beckham Jr. was all about self and not about team. But anyway, Harbs said, I, I don't care who you are in this league. You've always been on a team and had teammates. You've been around guys in the locker room, and it's just a bunch of guys trying to be the best that they can be. Um, so I, I felt like Harbaugh handled that question well. He answered it really well um, and, and allowed Odell Beckham Jr. to uh, still have dignity with that question. Because I just, I, and maybe it's me. Maybe it's me over looking too much into, but I, I just wasn't a big fan of that question because I felt like it like, and, and we get that Odell Beckham Jr. is a star. But it made it seem like he's a star that would have his own locker room separate from everybody else that he would just be focused and only care about himself. It made him sound like he was like this arrogant guy that only cares about Odell Beckham Jr. and doesn't care about anybody. That's what it sounded like to me. But again, I, I could be wrong. So anyway, <clears throat> um, to EDC, uh, EDC was asked, uh, Lamar said he requested a trade back on March 2nd, and have you spoke to him since then? I'm pretty sure that was Jameson that asked that question. But EDC said, we have communicated since that date, and it probably wouldn't be smart on my part to discuss those details. So, and the cops are like, look, <laughs> I'm, I ain't trying to mess up this relationship with Lamar. I got to keep what we talk about between me and him, and that's that. Um, but he said, we only think of Lamar as a QB of this team. It's been a long process, and a, and a lot of things in life Take a long time. Uh, these things take time, work, and patience. And yeah, we, from the outside looking in, we could tell it takes all of those things and more. Um, now to Odell Beckham Jr., uh, he said that Lamar seemed excited, like after he signed. Uh, he, said, he said that Lamar was like, oh, trust, and that uh, Lamar said that he was excited about the opportunity and the possibility uh, said he's been there where he's worked his entire life to get to the NFL. And he said it's tough when your heart is involved and it gets mixed with the business side. And he said that he would love to play with Lamar. He said Lamar reminds him of Vic. Um, and he said that Vic always showed him love like when he was a young kid. And he said he tried to reciprocate that same love to other kids. Because um, he said that Vic, that, that just made a really big difference with him. 
Uh, and he said that he hopes it works with Lamar. Uh, said if he could hand it over to him, then he would. But that's not in his payroll. And that's, yeah, we brought that up earlier. Um, then Hobbs was asked about how Todd Munkin feels. And Hobbs said, I, said, I see Hobbs negotiating. Uh, he was like, he said, Munkin probably not even listening listen to this right now. He said he probably drawn up plays for Odell uh, and plays for Lamar. I said, okay, yeah, I see what you're doing. Um, Odell talked about when Bashadi reached out that they chopped it up just like two men talking. He said not even about the business stuff. He said they were just talking. Even though, I mean, you know, Steve Bashadi ain't just calling Odell for no random phone call. You know it's about business. But he said he talked to him just, just like a man, just straight up, man. Just a conversation. And we appreciate that, man. You appreciate that. Like even um, like, for example, when we bring somebody on here, if we do like a collaboration with somebody, we know that it's business. We, it's business whether I'm on somebody else's channel, they come on here, whatever it may be. But me, I always appreciate. Because there, there's some people where they may come through and you do the video, record it, boom, 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 done. All right, see you later. Appreciate it. Boom. It's over. And there's no problem with that. There's nothing wrong with that. But then there are people who will come through. We talking for like 30 minutes before we even press the record button. And then after we, we record the video and whatever, then after that we talking for another 30 minutes. Sometimes even longer. And I, I always appreciate that because it's just a vibe, man. And when you're just talking, chopping it up with somebody, and you know y'all 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 gonna take care of business, but still when you're just chopping it up with them, it's just different, man. It's different. So I I I felt where he was coming from on that part about talking to Bashadi. Um somebody asks about everywhere you play, teammates talk about how great of a teammate you are. Uh, why do you think not everyone views you that way? Uh, he said he made some mistakes in the past as a young man with the spotlight on you, like when he was in New York. Um, he said he could have done some things different. And he said when he was out there making one hand catches, it wasn't like he was taking out his phone and being like, oh, no, look at me, look at me. It's all about me. So he wasn't he wasn't on that stuff. Um, he talked about uh, his son because Ryan Mink asked, uh, how has his son impacted um, this football for him? And he said that he uh, he can have one of the worst days ever, but then he'll come home and the son is like that. And it changes everything. And he shouted out his son's mom, his entire family, just everybody. And that, that part hit me right there. Because it reminded me of, um, even now too, but it's definitely when Carter was younger. When Carter was younger, if I have a, like a really bad day at work or something, I used to have some really bad days at work. Oof. Oh, man, I used to have some really bad days at work. Um, but before this, but just, oof. Because like with that is like... Oh, it could be stressful in my, my last job before doing this full time. But um, when he was, he was younger, like he was a baby and stuff, and like you stressed out about the job and whatnot, you come home and then you see a kid, it's like, oh man, it just, you can still be stressed out, but it just, it helps a lot. They like alleviate so much from you. Um, so that, that, that was special right there. I, I really appreciated that part. Um, and then the question was asked to EDC, uh, was wide receiver more of a priority this offseason? Uh, EDC said, we still strongly believe in the draft, but he said, let me say this first, uh, we believe strongly in our young guys. So he, he said, I ain't getting caught up. Cause he, oh, he went to the draft, but then he's like, hold up, let, let me shout out my guys. And then he named uh, Rashad Bateman, Devin DuVernay, Tylen Wallace, and James Prochet. And then he said, we also brought in Nelson Aguilar, of course. Uh, he said, we've tried in the past, um, and he said there can be times when you might have the best offer for a player, but a guy feels better somewhere else. Uh, but he said, in this case with Odell, uh, we found the right person. Um, and then Odell was asked about how there's a perception in the past, and the guy was like, oh, it, might not be, it might be right or wrong, I'm not sure, but that wide receivers don't want to come play in this offense. No, it's right. It's right. I know the, whoever asked that question, he kind of wanted to shy away from it. Or what? No, it's right. It's correct. But anyway, he said, uh, uh, Odell Beckham Jr. said, I don't really know if I thought about it. He probably did. But anyway, the Raven showed him that check. And he was like, oh, what wide receivers don't want to come play in Baltimore? I, I'll go quick. He cut him that 15 mil guarantee. Odell said, forget all that other stuff. I'm with it. But anyway, uh, he said, I don't really know if I thought about it. Uh, I just know I saw number eight out there, and I know he can throw the ball. Because um, he talked about how there are a lot of people that feel like, and say Lamar can't throw the ball, but he talked about perception versus reality. Um, and he said it was about being wanted. I know what Munkin did in Georgia. I was in Cleveland. I was in a running style offense in Cleveland. Then he said he went. He was in that when he was in LSU. They ran the ball all the time, uh, but he still put up thousands of yards. And he said to to have a good pass game, you have to be able to run the football. 
Um, and then uh, somebody asked him about like how teammates and stuff view him since he's so popular and whatnot. And he said in the locker room, we don't worry about none of that stuff. We ain't worried about none of it at all. Um, and then one of the last questions was to Hobbs. He said, what kind of changes will be made to the offense with adding somebody like Odell? And Hobbs said, like, maybe some stuff philosophically you might change, but nothing crazy. He said, we got concepts for this player, that player. For We got, we got some stuff. We got to add some new plays in for Odell Beckham. And he said, well, you got a player like this. It makes it more fun and gives you more options. And that is a mindset I wish the Ravens would have had a long time ago. When you add a player like this, it gives you more options. And that's what it's about. Especially on offense. The defense too. But having more options. So again, this season, like every other season too, is huge. Um, still a lot of pieces left in the puzzle that need to uh, be put together. Uh, like what the Ravens are going to do at the quarterback situation. And even though it does seem like, oh, so yeah, just it, it'll be Lamar. Sign Lamar, give him a deal, da da da, da do something. It obviously, like we've seen this entire offseason, it's not that simple. And if it was that simple, then all this stuff would have been behind them already. But it's still right in their faces. So we'll see how it goes. Um, but team, keep it clean. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. Um, I know this one went on for a little while. But, yeah, uh, it was nice. It's nice seeing Odell Beckham Jr. as a Baltimore Raven. Appreciate y'all. And just like Odell Beckham Jr. won't be. Since he officially signed that deal, there ain't no backing out now, baby. We out. Challenging Madden. Ha. Let's go. Make him rage quit. Exit out the door. Exit out the door.